Hi, my name is Gil Robertson, president of the African American Film Critics Association. Today we're talking to the wonderful dynamic cast of the American Society of Magical Negroes. Oh yeah. We're gonna kick things off by introducing you to the AFCA members. Emmanuel Noisette from uh Eman's movie reviews. Uh this question is actually for Kobe and Justice. I'd love for you to weigh in on this as well. Um, so the film already had a huge challenge of talking about the black experience in America adjacent to whiteness. Um, and, you know, you chose to make Aaron the lead character biracial, which kind of seemed in contrast to the majority of the other magical Negroes. Can you share like your thought process behind the decision in contra in context of portraying the black experience in America? Yeah, sure. Um, in terms of what the film is about. One way to think about what the film is about is about the false promise of assimilation. So there is a a, a suggestion in certain corners of America. Um, we keep each other clean here. That's what we do. Uh, Sorry, Toby. There's, a, there's a suggestion in certain corners of America that if we just uh, assimilate harder as black people or non-black people of color, that if we just um, you know comply with the officer's orders, as it were, we're going to be safe. Um, and I think that's a really dangerous lie. And uh, part of the satire is underscoring that um, what's the what's the pithy way you put it, Justice? That um, palatability uh, will not save you. Palatability will not save you, right? And and to to sharpen the critique of that um, false idea that that you know assimilation, the palatability will save you. Taking the most palatable people of color, you know, a light skinned non black woman of color, high yellow, uh, a black biracial, <laughs> a black biracial man in justice, and and obviously that it's my own experience too. Oh, that, that even <laughs> nah, he high yellow. We got, we got a lot. We got a lot of names. So you all, you all, you, this room knows all the names. Yeah. <laughs> That that even the black people like this, people of color like this, will never have access to the full privileges of whiteness, despite their uh, literal proximity to whiteness. Mm -hmm. That casting choice was incredibly deliberate to highlight the the falseness of that promise of assimilation. So, um, uh, to to me, you know, um, as a black filmmaker, we're always thinking about colorism. We're always thinking about the representation of us. And and I know Justice, I speak for both Justice and I, that we're incredibly aware of the opportunity cost of presenting bodies that look like ours as opposed to darker skinned bodies. There's, there's, there's a politics to that and there's a, there's a tricky politics to that. But in this case, I really do believe the choice to cast these, these light skinned humans uh, <laughs> is, is really. <laughs> Wait, did you just call me light skinned? <laughs> 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 just, just talking about, just talking about this, uh, this, this, this access. Uh, These you know, I, challenge folk. I, be, I believe those politics are really positive for the black community because because attacking that lie about assimilation is to me terrifically important work um, for for all all black people and also non black people of color. I think attacking that that rhetoric and attacking that ideology is really important and to me. This this sharpened that critique. Anthony with the movie blog from New York. This this one's also for you, Kobe. Um, I wanted to kind of dig into that. You yeah. opted to depict uh you opted to depict an interracial romantic relationship between Aaron and a white woman. You know the Dr. Umars of the world wouldn't approve. <laughs> Can you share your thought process behind this decision and how it relates to the film's exploration of the black experience? Well, well the first thing I'd say is it's not a it's not a white woman. <laughs> she's she's sitting next to me, you know, and um, she's not a white woman. And I promise you, and I don't want to speak for you, but I'm going to speak for you for a second, uh, which is to say that I, I I know that her experience as a human moving through the world, I know this character's moving through experience moving through the world is not that of a white person. And I think it's really important to 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 understand that, right? That that what I'm depicting here is not a relationship between a black man and a white woman. It's a relationship between a black man and a non-black woman of color, right? And and in terms of the the implicit criticism there, just to be really explicit about it, right, is that a relationship between a black man and a white woman specifically is negative for the black community because there is a, a subtext of a lack of love for blackness in those relationships and specifically a lack of love for black women. So the first thing I need to say, and I want to be extremely clear about this, is that, that it is crucially important work that we are telling stories that center black women that show love for black women and center black love stories. That is crucially important political work. And I'm excited to tell stories that do that political work down the line. I also believe 
that there are ways that you can tell interracial stories in a way that do incredibly positive work for the black community. And to me, this is one of those stories because some of the most urgent political work we have is trying to not fight structural racism alone. So to me, this is an intersectional choice. What I'm portraying is not the relationship between a black man and a white woman, but a relationship between two people of color, a black man and a non-black woman of color. And to me, the, the, the work of understanding that while the way structural racism impacts someone who looks like Anli is different than the way it impacts someone who looks like Nicole and David and on and on, the, the, the forces we're fighting against are the same. And to me, uh, portraying stories where we link hands and say, hey, <laughs> across these racial lines, we're up against some of the same obstacles, building those coalitions, telling those intersectional stories. To me, that is terrifically impactful work for the Black community and for those same Black people who don't necessarily feel seen enough in, in, in all Black love stories. So to me, uh, even though the choice I'm making is to portray an interracial love story, to me, that is incredibly important work for the Black community. And, and we are a community that is in real danger if these structural racist problems aren't combated. So it's, it's literally a life or death thing to me to do this work. That's a good ass answer. Uh, yeah. oh. I talk. I talk. I talk to you. That's good. That's good. That's good. <laughs> Probably better than I would for myself. <laughs> uh, yeah. I'm new to this. Thank you, Michael. Everyone, thank you, thank you, thank you again. And Lee, Kobe, Nicole, and David, we love this movie, and we're looking forward to uh, supporting it and seeing it out there in the world. On behalf of the world's largest group of Black film and TV critics. Again, thank you for your time, and we hope you enjoyed this edition of Africa Roundtables. Have a great day.